bracing. This gonna penetrate. Good evening. Civilized towns. You look a man direct in the face when you talk to him. This isn't comfortable. Well, it's not supposed to be. Here's the uh, situation. Serious. Mrs. O'Dwyer was abducted. She is my everything, and those savages have got her. God knows what they're doing to her. And every second that we delay. You know who did this? I don't have a name. How many of them do you think there are? It won't matter. You have no chance against any number of them. I'm, I'm coming with you. No, no, I need you here. And this is what a backup's for, to help an emergency, not to stay back. I'm coming. We're making a five-day journey in three days, riding along and sleeping the bare minimum. I don't know what's west of here. No cattle trail or anything else goes in that direction. If our horses die before we get there, or we go into hostile territory, weak and foggy with exhaustion, we won't rescue anybody. Don't be scared. I am a friend. You aren't. Damn you! You had no cause. If you want to question my morals, do it later. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive. While our last two movies dealt with the powers of heaven and the powers of hell, our latest venture, in fact, just deals with the power of man. Or is it more than that? Either way, tonight we are talking about the 2015 gritty as hell western Bone Tomahawk. But I'm not here alone. No, no. In fact, I'm here to educate two of my fellow podcast hosts on the meaning of manifest destiny. First up, is a man who is the sheriff hunt to my chicory because he did, in fact, just make me some corn chowder this past Sunday. A man who is far too vain to ever live as a cripple. Mr. David Corsetto, how was your Thanksgiving and what are you drinking? Um, I am not drinking anything yet. I'm about to go drink something that looks like blood. That seems and, fitting. Yeah, for this movie that's fucking completely bloody. But right now I'm still watching the ending of this movie. And I'm you are a pro's pro. Yeah. What a pro's pro. So you're not drinking watched, anything. You're I, watching the movie. I, I had a long day at work yeah. and I'm exhausted. So excuse you my be drinking. I'm going to be drinking in about two seconds. But I'm literally watching the ending of this movie, which is fucking horrific. So, Mikey, pause the recording. Let's let's wait till he watches yeah, this. Like no, I've uh, already watched. This is my second time watching it, and I and I love it. 
It's just, what will you be drinking? What will you be drinking? It's uh, it's a pomegranate vodka mix. It's really good, actually. It looks like blood. That's good. Cool, cool. I'm cool. gonna get it right now. You go way, ahead. Yeah, yeah, way to keep the intro brisk. All right. Next <laughs> up is a man who knows that in civilized towns, you look a man direct in the face when you talk to him, and a man who, if you want to question his morals, will do it later. Mr. Christopher Mars, how was your Thanksgiving? Because Dave didn't answer me. And what are you drinking? Uh, it was it was ruined by the Patriots, uh, but um, that makes sense. Other, other than that, it was it was up till then. It was it was fine. I'm doing doing well now, and I am drinking some a couple different things. We'll start with uh, this flask, this metal flask of uh, no, no tincture, unfortunately, but it's uh, Yellowstone bourbon, actually, which is very uh, good. <clears throat> Dave's blood's drink. Dave's bloody drink. Ah, uh, it's uh. <clears throat> The I flask myself, is cool to the touch. So what are you drinking, Michael? I myself am staying on theme. Uh, not for me, but for the podcast. I'm drinking a Broken Skull IPA, which is really just uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's beer, the wrestler. It's been in my fridge we'll for take it. a while. But it just fits the... Ooh, smells like beer. It really fits the uh, the theme, theme of the Broken Skull. It sure does. Skull. But you don't like it beer, sure does. Right? How was your Thanksgiving? My Thanksgiving was very good. Oh, my God, I don't like beer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> my Thanksgiving <clears throat> was very, very good. Thank you for asking. And what better way to top off a holiday weekend than by Office talking season. about this? Just, I don't even know what to say. This movie that le- that leaves you going, oh, huh. You enjoy it, but at the same time, you're like, what? What? <laughs> what was happening and at the same time at by when it was over i said oh my like watching it the second time i thought this is just great a great it really is movie bone tomahawk written and directed by s craig zaylor or Zahler, starring kurt russell patrick wilson who i is a personal favorite of mine matthew fox who's a personal favorite of dave's and chris and everyone who loves lost richard jenkins who is the the um who steals every scene he's in and Lily Simmons uh, as well. And, you know, other faces, recognizable faces, David Arquette, Sid Haig at the beginning for about five seconds. Uh, it is a very small movie where it it had a budget of $1.8 million, but only made 481000 at the box office. But I did read that it had an estimate of over $4 million at home, home video revenue. So it was one of those movies that, Good. That's how it makes its money by people watching it at home, which seems to be most movies nowadays. Anyway, uh, yep. a Rotten Tomato score of ninety-one percent for the critics, with seventy-four percent only for the audience, and I think the Metacritic score was also seventy-four. For some reason, I didn't write it down here. So this just goes to show That's... you, right? This just to show you the morons of today, like you, Mikey, who love thank you, like these stupid, stupid like superhero movies that make billions of dollars. Yep. Which right. I don't go see in the they theater, but you do. They don't appreciate good fucking cinema. Right. What's There's the last movie you saw in the theater? Me? Yeah. I saw um last time I saw a movie. I was gonna I was say, I'm gonna say Maverick. Okay, big yeah. movie. Before that, was it Thor? I saw Thor, yes. yeah. Okay, in the movies. Okay, I saw neither. So thank you for being your own uh problem. Now if I may interject the uh the audience of 71, I guarantee it probably lost 20 points alone on the um, bisection, the, the uh, yeah, I'm sure. wishbone yeah. of, yes. of Deputy Nick, which still gives me chills. Yes, yes. I, I watched I, it. I actually don't watch anymore. <laughs> I watched it the uh, the the first time I saw this movie a couple of years ago. Then I watched it while Dave was watching it for the first time. Then I just watched it today, and I was like, oh, wow, you really see the stomach just kind of fall out there. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, everything just falls out. This, mo- this movie wasn't nominated for any Academy Awards, but it <laughs> won a bunch of awards in various film festivals. It was nominated for a bunch of awards, but most notably, Kurt Russell won Best Actor in the 2016 Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. I just wanted to note that every award is worth mentioning. Absolutely. Why are you making pauses between your speeches, Mike? Because, David, I'm a professional, and when I That's, podcast, I so podcast we can professional, talk. and you are an asshole. Why are you squinting? Because <laughs> you're watching the movie. Can you just focus on us? Hey, over here, David, over here, David, David. Uh, we're here. all, listen, we're we're all winning when if he doesn't have uh, toenail clippers in his That's hand. That's true. <laughs> now, I talked to him earlier today, and he says, I'm really tired. I don't think I'm going to be able to bring it tonight. So he already has an ex- a built-in excuse. 
Um, and I'm, I could just watch him watching the movie right now. Yeah, actually, that would be a good good for our YouTube feed, which we don't have. So, would you, would you call this a feel good movie, Dave? No, One of those uh, goes <laughs> down, goes down. <laughs> there is some feel good about this. There is. I'm. I. So, I'm, it's Patrick Wilson. Yes, there's oh. there's a. I mean, here's here's the thing. I first saw it. Um, I don't remember. I think I heard about it on a podcast. Of course, um, we won't mention. Our, our competitors yeah, um and i so i i have seen all three of s craig zoller's movies i'm not sure if i saw dragged across concrete first um but i ended up watching this great dialogue obviously very gritty gritty as you said shakespearean and like every word it is shakespearean is and it's you know, as you come to find out watching his other movies also, there's uh, just horrific violence. Sure. Um, beat you over the head with, with some scenes. And, and I, I'm not sure if you've, you've ever seen Cell Block. Is it Cell that Block one 99? I haven't seen. Vince Vaughn is in that. That's actually excellent also. So it's, right, it's obviously not a feel-good movie. But it what a cast. Great acting. Just oh. a... Exactly. The dialogue is actually underrated, though, right? I mean, it's just there, there, that old, Ridiculous. you know, Western yep. colloquial colloquialism, colloquialism. You got it. You nailed it. Um, yeah, smooth. So, but like you said, Sheriff Chickory, uh, Deputy Chick, backup deck, Deputy Chickory, yes. just such great lines. Every every line is, I, I think, right. is is entertaining, and it's like you said, it, it just it has a point. It's just you know you're not sure you underestimate this character, and turns out to be you know very smart and just it, just well done. Un unpredictable, right? It is. It it sure is because every as corner we will discuss. Yeah, you're waiting. Yep. It could happen at any time. People could pop in, pop out. Like the the uh, you know the enemy. I first watched this movie, I think, because you told me to watch it a few years ago that might so, have yeah that, that seems to be a theme that right? seems yeah that happens a lot uh and i just remember yeah totally i certain things where i love these movies where there is a lack i, I probably said it before a lack of music which plays yes. a part too because the em, like just the emptiness of, yep, no score well there was no not no score there was very minimal score yeah exactly and even even towards the end there's not like anything until like the very end they and not a huge like a at some score. point it's it's a road movie at some point yes it's a, it's a buddy it's a, movie it's a, feel, it's a feel good road trip right it's a it's, it's a, a buddy it's movie a, it's a buddy movie it's a husband going back for his wife movie hey, it is but it's not a it's, buddy movie it's not a buddy movie because you're right buddy. it's more of a it's more of a planes trains and automobiles yeah. it was though because you know david arquette was the buddy. old west with yeah there's buddy. yeah but i don't think I mean, besides Chicory in he wasn't uh, buddy. I call him buddy. You're right. Uh, those two, like Chicory, had like this complete and utter like I don't know excitement over the sheriff. Love the guy. Oh, they had him. a great friendship. I, yeah. I, I'm going to talk about that obviously, but I like how so they're not really friends. You know the the sheriff and Arthur O'Dwyer. They have uh, they have like a mutual respect, sure. and then even you know obviously he's not friends with Mister Bruder. Who, who's the honestly yeah, cat. Matthew Fox is a great character. <laughs> um, but they have like, it, not really, a, you know, he gets mad at him a few times, but, but they end up, obviously they end up appreciating. He I appreciates they, what they're they, doing. Yeah. He, they have, they have like a bond. Exactly. So like besides, he feels like the boss, but just kind of like, all right, enough. This Like he'll do anything he says and he knows that he'll, that he's just trying to do good. Exactly. And then, yeah, I love I love the relationship of Sheriff Hunt and, and Chicory, how Sheriff puts up with him, you know, just is used to his basically nonsense, nonstop, nonstop nonsense. And like that little dog that jumped over the big dog in those old Looney Tune yep. shows. Yeah. Yeah, and just certain lines yeah. like, Do you ever close that, that aperture? Do you ever stop? Yeah, well he finally yeah. that's that I think that's finally when he is a little aggravated because you know there's, there are times when you shouldn't say anything, you know, when when uh, Bruder is bringing up his his family, his right. uh, his family, and the reason he hates Indians, um, that he's like, yeah, maybe don't say anything. So, but it, it's it's funny because it's you know it's kind of Western horror, 
And... It's definitely a Western horror. Yeah. Those fucking the screeching. I'm literally I'm I'm watching yeah. this thing for the second time, and I'm and it's on the ending, and it's fucking scary as fuck. So yeah, my... I know we're gonna go through it all, but people who have, are who are listening have seen this movie. So let me ask now before I forget: Are these the troglodytes, as they call them, are they like supernatural kind of? Because those things look no. like they were. You think they implanted those things in their neck? Yes. yes. Okay. I, I think yes. So it's funny. My buddy, a new listener, my buddy Dick, um, very very big fan of the podcast. He Thank watched you, it because I told him we, we I told him we were going to be doing it, and he's he said it's kind of like science fiction, and I and I said. It is, but I don't think it. I, I don't think any of it is really science fiction. Except like I think so those things were. Yeah, yeah, I think that you know they, it's in there so long. You know, somehow yeah. they perform whatever surgery that is part of his body now. You know, I don't know if it's when they're young, That's but true, they do perform surgery. I think it's we kind of the like women. Yeah, they, that Arthur shot. So what's that? Arthur shot that little, the younger one. Yeah, that's what made me also them. think that it was always it's in yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it's I don't think it's super. Yeah, now is this going to become a cult classic since it did not do well in the theaters at all? I think it, it kind of is in, the, in this Western, like, like yeah, I, I first think it's heard very about popular. It through, uh, I think before even maybe after Chris mentioned it to me, there's a podcast I listen to. That these guys watch westerns, and that was one of the movies they talked about. That's funny. Good, good stuff. Feel good for the whole family. I actually almost was going to show my kids, and they're like, "No, no. Holidays. I always right after say. Thanksgiving, probably." It is a harvest, like we said. It's a there's a good wishbone scene. There's a it's a it's a good fall movie. There's a good leg. Eat, you 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 eat the leg. Is a good leg. Yes, season. you know people like this that. This is true. They're the they, uh, they're 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 about feasting. Yep, they're sh- share, see- passing around <laughs> drinks. Hold on, did you actually see them eating people? Sure. Yeah. You did? When? Yeah, you've watched, how many times? It's, this is okay. This is, I know I'm going to bring, we're going to talk about this later, but I don't care. I have to say it. Kurt Russell gets his dick shot off. No, no. he doesn't. What? He gets shot in the stomach. He's right down at the balls. No, he shoots it, him at the rifle. He, he doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to reload. He yeah, but but then reload. he does reload and he shoots him. He, he, shoots, him in the he shoots him in the gut. He shoots him in the ball, in the balls. Can you see this look on his face? What are you talking no, about? That wasn't Mike? nuts. So he shoots see? him in the dick. No, he didn't. He, that thing in Michael, the gut was they sliced his gut and they stuck the no, thing No, Michael, in. that's a different oh. side. He he has a big gunshot wound on one no, side. No, the, other, is... the other side, he I, sliced I, open. I, they I'm don't like, shoot I'm, him in the dick. I'm looking for the ball shooting scene that you told me about. I'm like, that's on the balls. He had this look of shock in his face because he he, 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 he... No. He, he desexed him. I can't think of the word, but... No. Oh, but then, man. This thing's so, away. I don't like this movie as much anymore. Let, let him die with his dignity. I so I I told you both that one of the fears I had it, it wasn't even that Sheriff Hunt was going to die, you know, or Chickory was going to die. After that horrific uh, Nick scene, I was just like, I, I just hope they don't they don't suffer some gruesome horrific death that I won't You're be next. able to get out of my get get out of my. Uh, my yeah. mind the movie just um, ends with all four of them being viciously you know like like got it to death yeah it was so got its role. I, and then i wish they killed these fucking crazy fucks a little bit more brutally though for I mean, they were simple folk kurt got one pretty good i mean huh? yeah he did Hunt. he did he got the he, that was um re- one. Fucking that was wolf skull right that was wolf skull he was the leader. it was kurt russell day and you said that I know. You I'm, I'm going to be drinking this also. I, oh. I thought it was called Gray Wolf, but it's no. I forgot. It's Gray Lock. That's for our gray-haired Sheriff Hunt. God, God rest his soul. So, um, Dave, you you missed the part again. We'll get to it. But at, right after he they kill he kills Nick. He's chewing on his his leg. Yeah. I, well, okay. So here's the thing. As, as they were whispering that fucking guy, I literally, at the one, as they're cutting down his fucking asshole, uh, I had to turn around and not look at it. So there's a yeah. good 10 seconds where I just couldn't watch. So I, I guess fast I, forward I, that now. I can't. I missed. You know. I guess I missed. I slow it down. What? And then finish. I slow it then. down. I put it on. I put it on a loop. Oh, God. I okay, just... on that note, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Let's roll. <laughs> 
Bone Tomahawk. What did you mention? What year, Michael? Twenty fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Um, but you get the intro. You hear flies buzzing. You know what I mean? It just right, right away. Atmospheric. You know, right there's away. There's death. There's death. Right. And obviously, the opening scene, the opening shot is a guy waking up, getting his throat cut by Purvis. I keep calling him uh, Dewey in my notes. Right. <laughs> David Arquette. So, but his name is Purvis. Uh, he's cutting the guy's throat. The loud, just him cutting the cartilage and just a, a gro- pretty gross sound. Why do they always wet themselves? And his partner says, uh, just get on with the task. Sid they, rob, they rob people. Yep. He's yep. Uh, He's been in like Rob Zombie horror movies, House of a okay. Thousand Corpses, all those. Yeah. Uh, he's a character. I, I, I He's kind of like a Coen Brothers type of It seems like, right? Uh, yeah. Character, this guy, right? Some of the things he comes out with. So uh, one of the guys still alive. This is the real buddy. Buddy shoots him and then smashes his head with the rock. Then he tells, explains to him, you know, there's 16 major veins in the neck. You need to cut through them all. He's like, how do you know that? He, his somebody he knows was yeah, knows acquaintances the doctor, with yeah. the doctor, right? So they hear they hear horses. Dewey has to go hide in the rocks. They're they're <laughs> about, still got Dewey. Dewey, I, I I may be calling him Dewey all the time. Purvis, Purvis. Um, so they're escaping. They, uh, Purvis hears the the sound. Oh, right away. We, it's like... The haunting sound. He said, did you hear that? No, that's just a gust. But, uh, no time for womanly imaginings. And then they, they get turned around. They, you know, the sun's in, on one side. Suddenly they see, you see a shot of some skeletons on the poles. It pretty hurt. It's pretty scary opening scene. And, um, Purvis doesn't want to go through the burial ground. The other guy's like, you know, this savage is anyways, no concern to the civilized man. You, you which never is go through an Indian I burial just, ground. Which is ironic after he just butchered all those yeah. people. I know, right? Yeah, I know. Exactly. They're savages. But, right? hey, I'm not savages. Oh, yeah. The, these people are the, these people are the scum of the of scum. Yeah. Just murder and, and rob these people. Um so then he's like, uh, you hear the sound again and uh, Purvis says, if that was a gust, it learned an instrument. He's pretty good in this, right? He's pretty funny. So, but he has his gun. He has, he has the sound also. He gets, he gets an arrow through the gut. And then, um, it just happened so quick. Yeah. Then you see the, the painted troglodyte. Uh, troglodyte. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. We'll call him right. The cave I looked it up. It's a cave. It's a cave. Very cave shadowy. Dwelling. You couldn't see yeah, him he, when I first saw this movie. I didn't even see him until the second time. Yeah, and then he's he's stabbing him, and uh, Purvis stumbles. You see the skull rolls, you know, and then de- de- this is the desecration, and then boom, title screen, oh, yeah. bone tomahawk title screen, right? So 11, 11 days later, in Bright Hope, that's the town, shows the the O'Dwyer home. Patrick Wilson. I wrote down Patrick Stewart. That, that's that's something else. Right? That's something else. Patrick Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson is great. He was great in Fargo. I know you he's like him always, in the Conjuring movies. Yeah, in the Conjuring movies. He's always mm-hmm. just. He seems always just like an earnest, nice. He's very guy. serious. Yes, right. he's very Sincere, right. He's a uh, hard worker. Always hard working. Legs in a splint. Fell off the roof. So you get some good Western dialogue. You know, talking proper, but but funny. Uh, the the woman here comes Mrs. O'Dwyer. I agree, Dave. You're hot. <laughs> David Hot Alert. Repeat, this is a David Hot Alert. This is not a test. The scene following is even better, but go ahead. Yes. Oh, and they're humping? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mikey, Spoiler. I know you just used to your parents doing it, but when you Come see on, enough, enough actual that, hot please. people doing it, it's way better. All right. Way better? So, so are you comparing it? Asshole. It's just a little better. <laughs> um, so... So he's he's pissed off. He missed out on you know he's a foreman of some kind. He uh, missed out on on some job. You look puzzled, Dave. So one of the he's last just squinting because he's blind. She so she says different. at least you get at least you get to spend time with me. You know he's like you know you're most you're prettier than most cows and most you know never it seen Jessica. Yeah yeah. Uh, so Purvis, I really have. Did write down Dewey everywhere. I would have just wrote so David it's Dewey. I, I should just said Dewey. Uh, it's burying the stolen goods. Um, so you're at the bar. You see the the young kids sw- sw- uh, sweeping the floor. Jack, 
we see Jack here. I mean, Mr. Mr. Bruder comes in dressed all spiffy. I like this little scene. He goes to pay. He wants to play some music. He goes. And did to the we drunk see pool. who the piano player was? We did. Back to the Future. Yes, slash, Mr. Strickland. Uh, got a real attitude problem, McFly. You're a slacker. Top Gun. Back to the Future. Yeah. Top Gun. Yep. So yeah, and then I love the guys passed out. He's one song costs three cents. Why do three songs cost a dime? That's the rate. Shouldn't the price per song get cheaper when more are commissioned? Well, I get tired after two, so the third cost extra. The four songs cost a dollar. My song or be part. Pays for three, and then he turns it over the mandatory drink. He has to get him. He's kind of amused by that. So at the jailhouse, you see the great Kurt Russell um, cooking some soup. Sorry, he's cooking something. Because Ch right. so Chicory shows up, the great Richard Jenkins, as you mentioned, says that's that tea smells gruesome. It's soup. Oh, Is you you think I could have some? Uh, no spoons. Can you eat without one? He's like, I like a challenge. Everything he says just is everything just, he said is just he's so funny. dumb and he's hilarious. Yes, uh, he has some morals too. He has a moral code. You could tell he's a good guy. Yep. Um, he's the backup he just wants to be backup helpful. deputy. Yep. Talks about his wife who passed. Uh, he's telling the sheriff who he saw a stranger. Then he interjects, you know, this this tastes like corn. Uh, you know, it's a corn chowder. Things are lining up, he says. <laughs> so you could tell the sheriff hunts used to him, used to his uh, his, his yammering. <laughs> you think he created that title just to give the guy something? Because obviously, right? the backup to the, yeah, the backup to deputy. It's kind of like the office the sense, assistant yeah. to the manager. Yeah. He's like, he's like assistant a to the Dwight, regional manager. It was a Dwight true to this movie. Yes, exactly. <laughs> With yeah, the, the Dwight shoot, Dwight Schrute. Uh Okay, so then he he almost forgot what he's you know what was what was he doing? Oh yeah, I forgot about it. This guy was burying stuff. He's over at the learned goat. Then you see the scene. Scene David was talking about. Mrs. O'Dwyer is uh, on top of uh, Arthur. Delicious. And he says he wants to do it the right way. <laughs> what? The right way. Missionary. I don't know. The way she was doing it was pretty good. I mean, hello. Yeah. I was like, that was, seemed fine to me. It was just fine to yeah. me. I don't know. I don't know. Miss, Miss, Mrs. D I, enjoyed it either I way. Nice. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Let's give Dave a few minutes. Uh, so, Purvis is at the Learned Goat getting poured a, a drink and this is sheriff chicory comes in good evening uh he puts a finger up he, you know in civilized places we look a man in the eye you know who he kind of talks to him like is is little bill from unforgiven yeah right he does the he does the he's not bullying but he's very Showing, witty and, and just it commanding and he's yeah. putting him in verbal you know he's basically letting the guy you know talk himself into a corner yeah you know, what's your name? Buddy. <laughs> Took a moment to recall that, didn't it? My name is Buddy. Why are you here? I'm going to meet someone. It's today's date. Seems like if you had a rendezvous scheduled, you'd know what day it was. Let me give you an easier question. Who'd you steal those clothes from? I ain't stole nothing. Well, you're pretty angry for a guy named... Buddy, you've been squirting lemon juice in my eyes since you came in here. I didn't commit no crime. Why are you talking about crime now? Are you carrying a weapon? A gun? Knife? Letter opener with a sharp point? Dynamite? No. Deputy? Raise your hands. If you move in a hasty manner, I'll put a bullet in Raise That's the only thing. Like I just told you, I ain't got no weapon. Because you put him in that hole, you do. You all right, old man? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought I had it. Tries to run, shoots him in the leg, bumps his head, gets knocked out. So take him to the jail. So Arthur and his wife... Um, back at the house, he's resting his leg. Nice little moment. The wife wants him to, to read him the poetry he wrote. And Bruder shows up, gives Mrs. O o o O'Dwyer a once-over that 
Dave would approve of. Says uh, Drifter got shot in the leg. Doc Tail is in his cups, of course. And every turn she... of phrase like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. She has to leave. So she's the doctor's assistant, right? Who's probably better than the doctor. So that's she she learned from him. Doctor and uh, so she has to leave, tells Arthur, um, I have to go perform surgery. Arthur yells at John, you know, he knows John, but like I said, not his friend. Don't flirt with my wife. Uh you can tell he's not a fan, so you can see it was so, like real but somewhat playful too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Don't flirt with my wife, but right. He wasn't yeah. like, he knows him at least. Yeah. So uh, back at the jail, Chicory loses his hundredth game of checkers in a row to Nick. So Sheriff finds a blonde hair and he knows, you know, these, these drifters, a uh, drifter is a criminal and he's going to hang. He probably murdered people. So she tri- treats the drift, the drifter, uh, scolds the sheriff a little. He's like, he's pr- probably going to hang anyways. So doesn't know his real name, but he's obviously fake. Tells Chicory to go home and rest. Tells Nick to stay. Fateful decision. Um, and did you hear Chicory had a great line then? He goes, oh, I'm doing better than I thought. He goes, you're looking at the wrong side of the board. Oh, right, yes. The when, they're walking out, <laughs> when they're walking out, he's like, you're looking at my side. Th- <laughs> oh, yeah. That's even that one. Line. Oh, so good. So good. So she's like, I'm going to stay the night to monitor the fever. Um, Sheriff goes in to tell Arthur that she's going to stay the night. Very polite and formal. Tells him Nick Nick's going to bring her home. He asked the sheriff about his wife. She was sick, um, I guess, but she's better. And Arthur's reading reading her letters. <clears throat> Dear Samantha, I hope things are going good for you back in Bright Hope and that Doc Taylor is drinking less. I'm in Wyoming now. The ride here was long and difficult, and the foreman had to discipline a lot of men and let some go, which made things harder for the rest of us, especially in this cold weather. I've been in charge of the night roundup for a while and have organized it pretty good. Sometimes when I'm working long, I look at the faces of the other cowboys and I can see that they're miserable all the way through. But since I met you, I don't get that feeling anymore like I used to. You give me this warmth in my direct center that won't turn cold no matter what happens out here. The other day I saw these hills on the border and the shapes of them reminded me of you when you're next to me in bed on your side. Sometimes I see you in the waterfalls and the clouds and Always you have that real happy look on your face. Like when I come back from being away and we're about to kiss for the first time in months. Well, that ain't a poem. Pretty decent, pretty decent writer for, uh, sure. Dave is yawning. He just got under his blankie. Uh, nice. We need a shot of this. Need some warm milk. Yeah. I'm going to heat this flask up. Don't you don't you worry. Ugh. So, Mrs Mrs O'Dwyer takes the bullet out of um out of Dewey. Waste of time. He's he's all doped up on opium. <laughs> then waste of time. Really it really was. It really is. So, do you see the kid at the stable? Horses oh. are going crazy. He opens the barn door. He gets hacked hacked up. He gets an arrow. Very, that was a very very creepy scene. I thought was that the Oh, that was an arrow through his head. Okay. He got so. butchered. I thought it was the. He got hacked too. Probably. He got the bone. Yeah. He got yeah. I think he, he got an arrow. He got the tomahawk. He, he got the bone. The tomahawk. bone tomahawk. Yeah, that's quite a weapon. Well, sheriff, I think it was a bone tomahawk that got him. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. So Arthur wakes up. She's not back. Uh, sheriff's wife is making breakfast for him, and Clarence, the bar owner, comes to tell him about Buford, the stable boy. Uh, he's dead. All she, torn up. Sheriff gave it to his wife the night before, though. Probably. Dave. He did. He did. He did. He said that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. He said like, yeah. He said I gave it to you, girl, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She gave gave her a little smack. Um, go make me some breakfast. So. I don't know he tells him the jail's completely em- empty. So, sheriff and Chickory go to the stable with guns drawn. They find Buford disemboweled. 
Uh, Chicory's in his long johns here, I think, which cracked me up. So uh, they go to the jail. It's empty. They find the arrow. So tells Chicory to go get the professor and bring him to the learned goat. He needs to tell Mr. O'Dwyer first. Arthur comes out. You know, obviously he's concerned. He sees the sheriff. He's worried something happened. He's like, tell me, you know, he wants to go inside and talk. He's like, tell me, tell me right now. Yeah, you could see you could see already. Arthur is very demanding, very thick headed. Um, There's one away. We need Impatient. purposeful, which yeah, yeah purposeful. So, so, but I mean, you know, you you can understand where he's coming from. Also, uh, he's like, we're gonna we're gonna meet at the learning goat. Your wife's been abducted. Blah blah blah. We're gonna go meet at the learning goat. Arthur goes off and didn't even put on his boots. So the sheriff closes his door for him, grabs his boots for him. So. Guy comes in asking about his horses. You know, this is Michael Paré. Michael Paré, Paré from Paré, Eddie and Paré. the Cruisers, Dave. Eddie and the Cruisers. Really? Actually, Eddie. Yeah. He's Eddie. Wow. He, he has a great a, scene. Great little really scene where he... He had an illustrious career. Yeah, he did. He, he didn't have much to do in this, this movie, too, because all he does is complain about his horses, and he goes to say something again, and Sheriff <laughs> says, hey, ask again, I will slap you red. <laughs> great, Help. great. No, not if I punch the guy, slap him. That's nice. I know. That's that what I do to bike yeah. when, he, when he pisses me off. I slap him red. Or at least threaten to. That's why I don't piss him off anymore. I've mm-hmm. learned my lesson. Yeah. Great. Sheriff Hunt's a great character, right? He is. And he just, he dresses cool. His hat, just the beard, everything's perfect. Curl yeah, he's got like a thick bowler thick type of hat. Hair. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh. He's awesome. Awesome character. So, he the professor's there. He's been in a, he's been in a few things. He was in Fargo also. He's been in he's in a new show. Oh, yeah, uh, is he a is that a Reservation Dogs? Is he in that? I don't know. I, that's not the. I don't even remember the show I watched. Uh, oh. Um, but he's he's so he's a professor. He says this tribe has no name, or they have no language. You know, cave dwellers. Oh, he was in Doctor so, Sleep. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. He was the villain. Yeah, he's good. So he won't go with he won't go with them. He's like, I'm not crazy, no, and you know, Arthur gets pissed. Uh, Troglodyte he tells him the savages they, you know, cannibals. So and then he, he says, why didn't they eat? Why didn't they take Buford? Uh, they don't eat Negroes, is what the professor says. And Chicory, so do they think they are poisonous? <laughs> That's a fun. Just, and it's not even <laughs> mean spirited. It's just no, no, it's just uh, childlike and yeah. And it just he it just late he just says it and that's that's it. So uh so Arthur's pissed off, obviously, ready raring to go. Professor that you know, the pissed off the professor won't, you know, go with them, show them. He's like, I'll show you on a map where they are, you know, that the the where the valley was. Um shows them where they are. Yeah, but why the mayor's you, wife. Because they're right. so disrespectful to him. What's that? Time. What's that in your hand? Yeah, what are you eating, Dave? Mushrooms, mushrooms. So we get the close up. They magic? We gotta, we gotta throw this on YouTube. Are they, are they, are they covering the, um, the microphone? Because you seem a little dulled out. By the well, way, he got so, it. He showed me his microphone the other day. He has a computer. He has a microphone. All he needs now is the cord. Oh, we get, we get we're getting so close. there. We're getting there. I'll get it. Listen, my point is, they were insulting this poor guy in front of him. So why would he even want to help them? Exactly. Yeah. Only, it means he's killed, and like right. he's like it's just, it. Yeah, we said it wasn't. Oh, close. yes. Right. So, yes. Um, Brutus says he's going. Right after they say they, he tells them they have no chance. Well, first you get the mayor's. You know who the mayor's wife is? No. Who is Holy she? shit! I just looked. That's, I'm just looking at IMDb now. I had no idea that was. I didn't either. That's Sean Young. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I remember her in the. Yeah, late '80s, and she was in. Originally, she was in. You know, um, East Ventura. No, what's the? Uh, East was she? She might have been Harrison East Ford movie. Um, Bla- um, Blade she, Runner. Blade Runner. Runner. She was in Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Right. Yeah, and then she was in. You know, she was. You know, on a hot streak. Doom. For a while. Blade she Runner. Looks a, looks a, very no different. Way, yeah, I did not. So even why why her. didn't they? Yeah, I didn't recognize her either. But so I love. You know, they're in one scene, and they just it it just says so much that. She's the wife of the mayor, but she obviously yeah. runs the show because Kurt Russell doesn't even look. Doesn't at the even mayor. address the mayor. He won't even like, address look the at mayor. Him. She's like, and he looks even right. look even he's when they mention it, he just looks right at her. That was mm-hmm. like four foot two. Yeah. Why yeah. Would you look at him? And he was a buffoon. Does anybody yeah. know how to spell truglodytes? 
Yeah. He's like, well, I got to write a letter. So, but uh, Ch- Chicory convinces Sheriff Hunt that he's going. I'm riding out with Mr. O'Dwyer because there isn't a choice for either of us. The rest of you can stay. You'll be killed. I'm, I'm coming with you. No, no, I need you here. I need to keep an eye on No, this. I'm coming. I'm coming. Nick's gone, and this is what a backup's for, to help an emergency, not stay back. I'm coming. All right, old man. This is suicide. I'll get packed to meet you in front of the jail in 15 minutes. As will I. I'm the one who fetched your wife, got her involved. Got a responsibility to you both. And I've killed more Indians than everyone here put together. Well, it's an ugly boast. It isn't a boast, but a fact. And Bruder, this is when Bruder says, I'm going to. I owe it, I owe it to the O'Dwyers, which is, you know, pretty not pretty noble, noble of him. Right. It's, it's not like he didn't, like, bring her into it. It was Hunt who brought her into it. He just, right, right. But he but feels he's got a certain probably. code, and he's, he did say he's killed more Indians. It's a strange boast. It's not a boast. It's a fact. So... Uh, Arthur Pax brings the poem. Sheriff wife, sheriff's wife is worried and tries to talk um, him out of it. Please obviously, she, she, yeah, please come home. It's kind of a he said, you know when you watch it again, it's kind of a uh, yeah sad scene. I promise I'll never die. Yes, <laughs> he didn't say that. He said there's no way. He basically that's, he basically said there's America no way Dave. I can't. <laughs> he said there's basically no way I can't go. Yeah. You know what I mean? This right. is my responsibility They're to like, do they this. Said, you I don't think. know these. You don't know these people. You don't know them anything. Right. Exactly. But that's his job. So that's the way he sees it. So she's yeah. She's like, done, you know, forgive me for saying, but they might be dead. So she's like, please come back. So Chicory puts some flowers on his wife's grave. Talks to her, and then you see. Um, Which is, do you think this is like if this is a normal movie? You're mm-hmm. thinking, all right, her Russell is probably going to make it out of this, right? Hopefully, and that. Uh, Trickery is going to be dead. He's going to see. Oh yeah, this. The other I'll way point around, out yeah. some things. I'll point out some things where it's like you're like, oh yeah, the, uh, yeah. Chicory is not going to make it. But I, you know, I like that it's not completely predictable. So I mean, w- would you have been shocked if they all died besides the O'Dwyers? Right. I guess I would that would. I mean, Rudy died like that so quickly. I'm like, I thought so they were, quickly. Yeah. You know, the bullets going. It, 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 like, it, it's and the dynamite. It never like give, leave some time. Yes. Like, went off. Never went off. I thought maybe you Pat fellas know we're gonna get to that part. Look, man, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Chris. Hold on. Can we start over at the beginning? So okay, That's... Sid Haig and David. Arquette. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. It's you know. Uh... Um, that's the format, you know, if we, if we get some feedback that they want us, you know, we, they want us to do it some other way, our fans, you know, will let us know. So they all meet. Chick, uh, Brutus shows up with his 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 white horse. Everything about Sheriff him is keeps... like the gentleman cowboy. Kind oh of yeah, perfect, it's it's great. But who is a badass also? It, exactly, and he's just, and he's kind of a you know he's an asshole too you know kind of. Yeah. Obviously, um, oh, yeah. I like how he calls he, he calls Arthur cowboy. I think he already did once. You know, he's just so uh, sheriff has to give uh, Arthur a talk. He's like, you, you can't, you got to take it easy. You can't push. It's all, our only advantage is, is that is being smarter, which coincidentally Arthur is. Yeah. Definitely ends up being the smartest one. So nice, cool shot of them riding. Nice buddy road trip. Like you said, so they stop and they stop. They need to, they need to rest. They ask Arthur if there's any more ponds. Cause he's from, you know, from work, he knows the terrain or whatever. So, <clears throat> Mr. Brutus sets up the trip wire around the and camp. That, that's you just see uh, Arthur getting off the the horse. Like he doesn't want. Oh yeah, he to needs rely help, on anybody. Right? But yeah, he finally he gives needs. Him, he's like exactly. And then he, I, I like how um, Bruder asked if there's any of them are some somnambulists. Are any of you somnambulists? That's private. Me sleepwalk. Oh, no, I don't. Uh, me neither. No. Sleep with your guns nearby, and you shoot anything that rings a bell. Could be an innocent animal, somebody lost. Our horses are hobbled. <laughs> Any animal that comes at us is a predator. Any person that approaches a camp in the dark without identifying themselves is a criminal or a savage. You hear it jingle. 
point your gun and shoot. I'll probably beat you to the draw, but don't count on me to save you. Let it go. I can't. Hey. Hey! Now you watch how you speak to the law. Sheriff especially. You aren't captain. No. I'm the most intelligent man here, and I intend to keep us alive. Oh, well, you're the most intelligent man here. Is that a fact? It is. Sheriff Hunt has a wife. So does Mr. O'Dwyer. And you're a widower. Yeah. What has that got to do with anything? Smart men don't get married. Well, that's because no woman wants you. This is when he said he's the smartest man here. How do you know that? I'm not. I'm not married. It's pretty. Right. Funny. You're married. You're married, and you're a widower. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I knew so. A smart man wouldn't get married, and then and, and um, Chickory's like, eh. he kind of like agreed with it. Well, Chickory says no. He he laughs at. He says no woman would marry you. Right. That's what happens. That come back. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, great comeback. So there camp campfire eating. Arthur saying grace. Uh, he's getting getting upset thinking about. The fact that they're you know sitting there eating and his wife just god knows what's happening Bruce chicory always wakes up stepping away from them he's he's standing yes. away from them he sits yep. and eats away from them yeah right he doesn't right he's right he's he's a loner you could tell uh i love how the chicory wakes up the sheriff to ask about this is why you could you could tell the, sh the sheriff just puts up with him he's sound asleep and chicory obviously has trouble <laughs> sleeping he doesn't sleep a lot he asks him about reading you ever you ever read it you know you ever read in the tub so he tries, I, but he can't. I found him incredulous. Like, why would you not read in the top? Yeah. How can you <laughs> not? Um, do you read in the top, I, Chris? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't take a bath. Very <laughs> rarely, but I do. What? That's why I got a waterproof Kindle. I I yeah. Time. Well, you know, you should get one of those. Uh, <laughs> one of those stands. One of those record stands. So this is what the sheriff tells him. I. I, yeah. I imagine sheriff just thinks of. You know, maybe Something. you should get a, get a music stand, uh, like get a towel stand. to dry your fingers. Right. That's Put great. That there. Chicory is thrilled. So he's, this is this is what makes you think he's not going to make it. He says, the first thing I get when when I'm done with this whole thing, I'm going to get right. back. I'm going to get one of those stands. And so I can, you like know, the Forrest Gump of this movie, he what? He's like the Forrest Gump of this of this little clan. Right. But likable. Yeah. Uh, Forrest Gump is likable. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving on. So oh, you uh, know, Chris, he hates Forrest Gump. I know. No, I don't. I don't hate Forrest Gump. <laughs> no, I, no not the movie, the character. Ooh, you oh. hate him. <laughs> Why do you um, hate Forrest Gump? Just because he's this, a little dim witted? Wow. It's, it's, you know, such an overrated performance, too. So ba back on track. Uh, nice little bond between between the two, like I said. Um, All and, right by the bell ringing, right? What's that? Isn't that right when the bells go off? This is when they. They hear a noise and Bruda pops up and shoots. Right. Yeah. 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 So they're riding the next day. Arthur's struggling, as you can you could tell. And Bruder has the German telescope. He wants to see what Arthur's up to. Arthur goes off by himself. I like the whole his... thing. It's called the German. It's like ooh, yes. like it's so fancy and nice and it's pretty. Yeah. It's it's pretty. It's I like I like most of the dialogue. Right. It's just yeah. it's entertaining good. hearing their expressions and hearing. Um, you know, he takes off the splint. He takes off his boot, and he's like, "Jesus, goddamn!" And then he's apologizing. No, I like when he's God. like, "What do you see in that? What do you see in the German?" He's like, "A snake in the tree." What kind That's of right snake? here, right? A snake. What kind yes. of snake? A dead one. De <laughs> deceased, deceased. Yeah. yeah. Deceased. Yeah. So, just, but he doesn't want to take. But even the way he says it is just fucking perfect. Yes, he's he's great. Like I said, his delivery of the lines are, are great, even to all the way to the end. Um. But they they don't want him to take opium, um, right? So they're like, so Chicory takes his gun. He's mad. He's calls him a dumb imbecile, and he um, they just don't want him to take the opium. He's like, I have I didn't take any. Why are you looking confused, Dave? I'm watching a dumb commercial. That's a squid right face. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, you. No, no, I was listening. We're doing a podcast. So uh, he tells him he apologizes for calling him he, they, they just don't want him to fall off his horse right right he's apologizing for calling him a dumb imbecile and he's like well my wife used to call me that and it felt kind of nice so sure i mean Everything chicory is like, tough just... to be insulted yeah so it it, it 
fire that night. They're talking about possibly amputating his his leg. Brutus says it seems a, like uh, that seems like a bad way to to spend your final days, which is yeah. some foreshadowing, obviously. So someone shows up at camp. Relax, gentlemen. Relax. Don't be scared. I am a friend. You aren't. You're a stranger and a sneak. I was about to announce myself. Strike a match so we can see you clear. We'll light things up with our guns. Mind our backs. One moment, por favor. My, my name is Amiro. You got any compañeros? I have an associate. Tell him to strike a match. Do, do what they ask. Just him? Just him. If we see any others lurking around, we'll execute you. I speak the truth. I was going to announce myself. Be quiet and toss your guns. My associate is unarmed. Come forward. Don't drop those matches. They come forward and uh, Bruda executes them. Boom, boom. Oh. See if you can salvage the fire. <laughs> Then Sheriff and Brood are draw on each other. I like this. They, they put the guns down right away. But the... Deputy, hold. Holster your gun. You had no cause. Those men were scouts for a raiding party. Or thieves. You don't know that. And I wanted to get information from them in any case. They wouldn't have told you the correct year, much less anything else. I know how to interrogate a man. He's got a system. We need to pack up and make a cold camp somewhere else, someplace defensible. If you want to question my morals, do it later. There aren't any to question. Transpired. Well, Mr. Bruder just educated two Mexicans on the meaning of manifest destiny. They deserve it. I don't know. Let's say you're in that position. Would you kill or would you stand? Stand down. In this world, I'd stand down. In that time, I think yeah. it's kill or be killed out there. It's yeah, it's tough. But it's kind of crazy of them to even approach a a party, right? right? Which tells me there, and, and he was hiding the guy behind him too, who had right. the gun. Yeah. So, it, but they kind of leave it right. They, you don't know what what even uh, even sheriff and Chicory don't know. You know, they really don't know because Arthur wakes up. Chicory tells him about it. Asks him if they deserved it. He's like, I, I really don't know. So. <laughs> Did they so at the new observing it? Were they were they actually in fact scouts? I don't know. I think I thought maybe I the, the next know. when we see the other the raid come in, I thought they were related. Oh, so I thought yes, maybe... yes, they they, they, they may have been, but you never know. Related. I mean, that's not yeah. you know 100% true, but um, so uh, first you you hear the little you see the little scene, Chicory gets pissed at Bruder, yells him, Yeah, he had no. You know, cause it's bothering him. He had no cause. He was wearing a crucifix. Well, Jesus should have helped him, is what uh, Brutus says. So, Arthur wakes up. He has commotion. You see someone attacking Brut. Brutus, someone stabbing him, right? Yes. So, shoots him. Brut, Brut, Brut has a knife in him. The horses are gone. And this is this scene's actually a little sad. You know, with Bruder, he says Sa oh, he Saucy would have Saucy would have resisted. He uses some, you know, he's a hateful man, but he he says she would have resisted. And then then Arthur's like, I see her. You know, I see her over there. She, she did resist. Did, yeah. And this yeah, is where you so. see the complete. Like this is where his emotion comes out. Right, yep. He is, he is, and then feeling. she's making a noise. Right. You hear her when he her cries, and he's like, I'm I'm coming. He's broken up a little. He Ooh. thanks her for her service and shoots oh, that her. Got me. So they all apologize. Sorry about that. So, so uh, Arthur's talking about, you know, because they have to walk now, Arthur's talk, they're talking about a plan. They need to sleep during the day. Sheriff's like, you know, it's a two-day trip. Uh, you need to, tells Bruder, uh, you need to compact your gear. I shall. Like you said, I love how, how uh, Bruder talks. And 
So they tell Arthur to go on. They'll pack your stuff, but they know he's going to be slow, obviously. They, you know, they get his canteen, his crutch. He and goes we ahead. Lost, we lost Dave, but I'm not going to stop. And you're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. Screw He'll jump back He'll be in. Back. He'll be back. So Chicory tells the sheriff he once saw a cripple beat him, beat him a regular man in a race. He's just you know, like, he's like oh. talking about him swinging the yes. like just All the yeah. million stories. Yeah. So I have here Arthur stumbling, but this, you know, what a rough trip for Arthur. I'd be crying in, in pain with it. So they catch up to him and Chicory's and, talking nonsense. And they ride away the end. You missed it all, Dave. We just finished. Oh, uh, it was so good. Yeah. What a movie. Alternate Ooh. ending. He's too tired to even care. So Arthur stumbles again, says, Keep going. I'll catch up. They will we'll mark the trail for you. They give, they gave him the German. Um, Looks like a brutal walk. No, they gave uh, him the other one because they gave him the other one. Use the German. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right, right. Okay. Um, they gave him a kaleidoscope. Final... Right, right, right. <laughs> do, 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 he do. thought he was on opium. Um, you know, did I take two chinchers? Uh, so finally, he comes up to their camp, just brutal, and uh, announces himself. You know, steps over the trip trip wire. They they had set up his role. Uh, we're leaving at twilight. Flash to the next scene. Probably seem seemed to him like he slept for ten minutes. They're like, um, wake him up. We're gonna. He tries to come with. You know, he's getting up, and Brutus says, "I won't flirt with your wife." Ooh, yeah. If we get there first, he punches him. He falls, hurts his leg again. Right. Chicory needs his. Looking at his leg. Ooh, I need my medical kit. And Arthur's like, "How bad is it?" He's like, uh, "Sheriff's like, that's it. You're not. You're not coming." Obviously, he gets gets pissed. He's blames the sheriff for shooting the, the drifter. Sheriff tells him it needs to be oper- operated. Needs we need to amputate that leg. And I was like, he's nope. Chickery's gonna. He's gonna have to take that leg. No, no, no. If we can't. don't, gangrene will set in, and then he'll no. die. No, I. This is my choice, not yours, and I'm saying no. No. Not, it's up to me. You're not going to no, do it. No way. Yep. Ask him if set he can it. set it. Right. Oh. Exactly. So, and then. Well, I think the sheriff still kind of blames himself for this whole thing going on. Yeah, but the sheriff, like he says, he's think we we are here where we are now. We yeah. we're yeah. we're here now. So you with, said it. No, yeah. No sense looking back. That's your choice. So be it. Will you leave some stones so I can follow in case something happens to you? I'll mark the route. Thank you. Just give me enough so you can operate. I don't want to wake up next month. <clears throat> you take the rest in case my wife needs it. Her deputy Nick. I'll put some in a whiskey flask. And I'll leave the remainder for you. But you don't take more than a spoonful a day. I don't know if I'll be awake when you go, so I won't apologize to you now for getting hot at you. I don't lose my temper most times. We know you don't. Don't concern yourself over it. I thought it made things interesting. I appreciate what you're doing. Don't think I ain't appreciative. Just please keep her safe. We won't leave without Mrs. O'Dwyer in our care. Feel the medicine? My hands got tingles. Lean back. Bracing. The tincture of help. This is going to penetrate. He apologizes again. This is a nice, a nice little bonding. They're all, they're all like, "It's okay, it's okay." And then 
Chicory tells him to lean back, brace him, takes out the knife, and then you see the hammer thing that's going to penetrate. Boom. Oof. Now, when they leave yeah. him, they don't show the leg like there's some, like foliage or right. a bush in front of it. So part of me thought they took it. They, they just told him. Yeah, that right. Yeah. He took the leg anyway. And I think he did have the knife out. So, but when yeah, he reacts did. later, I think he thought the same thing the way he reacts. Right. So, uh, dusk, uh, they show like after the fact it's dusk and they're, they're, they're moving along and he says, so long cowboy. That's what Bruder says. And will he survive? He's got, he's got a chance. So sh- they move on. Sheriff hears that awful noise. Bruder says he heard that the night of the kidnapping. Chicory asked Bruder how many Indians he killed. He's like, not all men. And that's why he's, you know, tells him the story. Some women, why do you hate them so much? Ask my mother and sister. This is great. He never met them. No, you did not. I said, Bruder's a little slow. Oh, Indians killed him. He's like, <laughs> and this is when, this is when Hunt says, leave him alone, old man. He's like, I was only 10 years old. And that's when he says, Sheriff says, is it possible for you to close that aperture? Yeah. So. Next day, they're looking through the German. Chicory says, "Oh my lord!" They think they see something. See, another great line. I wish, yeah, I wish I had this when I was on my trip. Like, I thought it was when coming. I was at the rodeo or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they find tracks. They they take a turn and they leave. They leave the rocks. And they see a little canyon like entrance, right? They hear, they hear the noise again. You get the. This is a, you get a close up of Chicory. I think he's gonna. You think he's gonna get it at this point. Bruda goes first. He says he's going to give him a sign in 30 seconds to get to throw a rock if it's clear. And it's Isn't just silent. The skulls when you go into that canyon on the wall, right? What's that? Say that again. Wait, is this where you see the skulls on the wall in the canyon? Yes. Like, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you see the big hole, you know, on the side of the mountain. You see Bruder kneeling. This is so. This is when they're all. You know, they're all just kneeling, surveying everything, and then arrows hit. Sheriff hit in the arm. Chicory gets grazed in the head. He's looking up with the with the um, with the German, and because I actually went back and I slowed it down, so I'm like, how did that happen? Oh, because it was whoop whoop whoop. Yeah, Yeah. because he gets hit with the rock. They both get hit with rocks. Um, Kurt Russell gets the arrow. And when the guy gets shot, that's when he throws the like the tomahawk gets let go. Yeah. Takes his hand off, like takes oh, it's takes Bruda's hand off. It's and you and see he just it on the looks ground. at it like, you know, like right. he's in shock. And it's, yeah, and then right, Hunt shoots one. What is it, Bruder? I mean, or is it uh, Chicory? I think Chicory shoots one. Um, so they run for the corner. Bruder, Bruder, like runs runs into the for a little cover. Tells him to tie it off. Right, he uh, he wants the repeater. <clears throat> this is when he says, "Supply me with dynamite, and don't return until I've used it." I'm far too vain to ever live as a cripple. This is my spot. I like a cigar. Leave the dynamite. Don't return. I'll use it. Far too vain to live as a cripple. That was the foreshadowing. Ask for a cigar. This is, like I said, a good performance here, right? Like oh, he's. Yeah. Trying, it's trying to be the gentleman guy that he is. The... the answer to your question is 116. You killed 116 Indians. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Bruder. We'll make sure all this has value. Please do. I shall kill as many as I can. I can. Oh, so. that, even the way you had said that, like, <clears throat> you're thinking, because, in the, you know, in the history, you think, oh, that doesn't right. sound great, but these are, these are just like monsters. Yes, these, right, yeah. these are cannibalistic uh <laughs> You know, not like a tribe even. Right. So exactly. Yeah. So he notices the dead Indian, and this is he's he's a little he's unprepared probably because he's pushing he pushes him with the he pokes him with the gun, and you see the breathing through the neck through the yeah. whistle thing. So that he does that a couple times, time. and so he wasn't ready when the guy turns the corner and throws. So he does not kill a, a lot of them. So you don't see what happened yet. 
Did he get? Did he even get, did he even get that guy? You heard the gunshot, but I don't. No, think no, I doubt it. The guy yeah. he didn't even have a chance to point it. The guy threw his his tomahawk. So you see, Ch- Chicory and the sheriff come through. His bone tomahawk takes an arrow through the. Uh, Chicory takes an arrow through his hand. Two guys attack them. It's a great shot of of the guy strangling Sheriff Hunt. I'm like watching this thinking, like, how are they doing? Like, how do you do this where you're not actually strangling, but it just looks like he is out Uh, of getting a breath. Just like, that's just good acting, I guess, but no music. And then they they stick the... And then he sticks the... the, the, It is the tomahawk bottom of it, you know, the bone in his mouth. And you're like, and then the other guy knocks him. Oh, my God. Knocks him out. Yeah, geez. And then they drag in them. And you see Chicory's still awake, and you see he sees Bruder with his head split from the, the tomahawk. Um, they make that noise, scream thing, and ropes come down. They pull him up the side of the mountain. So they see Mrs. Adwire. She tells him, tells him to listen. Uh, they go into the cell. She's sheriff's like, "Are you hurt? Is Nick with you?" He's not well. Nick's fine. Nick's hey, fine. Buddy. I wish. Oh, I wish that. I wish they did this before we had to witness it, they should have said. So we wouldn't have seen it, and yeah. us as the audience wouldn't have seen it. Yeah, at least with the drifter, so, they just said they Yeah, ate they them. ate him. They ate she him, says right? they ate him. So the scary-looking uh, wolf ghost face uh, comes in, and you, you're scared right away. And it's such so such a scary scene. And um, he, makes that, he makes that noise. They drag Nick out. Oh, my As God. I said, I don't like this. The sheriff's going nuts, telling him, wake up, wake up, Nick. So sheriff's trying to open the bars, and the guy chops slashes off. him, chops off oh. two fingers. Oh. Yeah. So, um, so Nick's telling them they strip Nick, tells him sheriff, you know, the drifter was a was a murderer. He deserved to die. He desecrated these things, burial ground. Oh, he pushed them in their sleep, and he robbed them. His name was Purvis, and then he desecrated the burial ground of these things, these Indians or whatever they are. He raved about it all in the end. Thanks for telling me. That man deserved to die. All right. You sent my possessions back to Michigan. Most of that stuff belonged to my brothers. I'll send it. Send my things home. Yeah, I'll, you know, fast forward through this. They scalp him and they shove something in his mouth and then they... They give him a haircut. Turn him upside down. And then they, uh... I wish that thing in his mouth murdered him. Killed him. So he didn't yeah, have he to was scream still while alive. he was... Uh, so the sheriff says the cavalry is coming. I want, you, I want you to know this, Nick. The cavalry's riding right now from Gatesville. And they're gonna butcher every last one of these godless beings. Uh, backup's coming. So... That and happens. They, they split. They him. rip him in half. Yes. This, this, they rip this, him in half. This is one of the most unwatchable scenes of any movie ever. Yeah, I hate it. This is the um, scene. If you say, "Oh, you," say, what about that scene? And that's this is the scene. If you would say, yeah. this, this movie. is the scene." Yeah. Like they exactly. Brian Ryan, horrible, gut wrenching. This is worse. Yeah. This is this is especially the the scalping because he's going like well, you're looking at his face going ah. No, but okay, yeah. but when they're whacking down his asshole. He's yeah. still grunting like this is fucking right. painful. At that point, it's still a person. I think they're holding. Then yes. you see it's like you know. That's the name of my fantasy so football team. Whacking down his I asshole. Didn't, that's why I didn't see them eating his leg because I stopped watching yeah. at that point. So, yeah, they um. You went to go vomit. <laughs> horrific. Yeah. So yes, they the next they cut to the next scene. I actually didn't notice it the first time I right. watched it. Maybe the second, but uh, subsequent. It, it, Oddly, I I've watched this movie. I've watched this four times. I think in the past week or so because it's it, it, it's it so great. It's the it's, it's so the, great. It's, Besides it's, that scene, it's, it's the new. It's a wonderful it, life. Oh. It is. It's a feel good. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch this tonight to go to bed. Yeah, I, it's, it's soothing. It's just comfort food. If you could so edit chicory, certain parts out, there is just some. There is. It's very. I could listen to chick. Right. Listen yeah. to chicory. So speaking to Chickory, he asks him about the cavalry. He says, I was hoping you had a secret backup secret plan. plan. You really don't. Oh. I just wanted, I, I said, I figured Nick would want to hear something like that. So that's foreshadowing too, a little bit. So they tell Mrs. O'Dwyer about Arthur. We left a trail to follow us. She's like, what? So he can come here? So 
She's like, this is why frontier life is so difficult. Not because of the Indians or the elements. It's because of the idiots. She's like, you guys are idiots. So the the two of them are like, oh, boy. Didn't they say that he's very determined or something like that? Yes, he's he's very determined, right? We really couldn't talk him out of it. So Sheriff asked her how many of them are. It's 12 males, two pregnant females who are blind, crippled. Another horrific visual. That was a tough one to see, too. So Hunt asked Chicory if he has uh, whiskey in the flask. Oh, yeah, but, but, you know, it has tinctures in it. Yeah, no kidding. Mrs. Dwyer's like, you have two t- tinctures of uh, opium? Yep. How many of them can you poison with that? So, you know, maybe Sheriff Hunt's not such a complete idiot. So cut to Arthur. He's dreaming. He wakes up. He starts moving. He s- slides down a hill. See, he so that's when he wakes hill. up and he looks down and because he, he looks quick. And yes. He's like, oh, he thank suddenly... God, my leg is still there. Yes. Yeah. So it's not ideal, though. He, and then Arthur hears that sound. He's talking to gods. He's like, I've been praying for this. You know, I need this is when I need your help. He's crawling near that gully and he finishes water and they back to the the caves where they uh, play their charade. And the sh- sheriff is pretending he's, you know, hoarding the flask. I think I need to take a sip of that Last flask. Time, yes. And mm-hmm. Pretends won't give it up. It's actually done. So they grab it, and uh, the 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 head guy pours some of it out, drinks a little. Uh, Chicory says that's got to taste better than people. So <laughs> they, I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if you caught that. They all drink some. The second guy drinks a lot. They throw it. He throws it in the embers. So and Mrs. O'Dwyer says one will die. One of them will die. One will be out for a long time. One of them won't be affected. So. Always positive, Mr. Chicory. Yeah, two more is respectable. She says, my husband Always will have to face the side. seven of them. Uh, and he's being crippled, too. So back to Arthur. Two of them come sneaking up on him. One of them misses with the arrow. This is when so he finally encounters them. He shoots one of them. Sh- shooting Shoots the other one. The guy puts in and he shoots his arrow. And then the guy's about to attack. Him reloading. Quickly, yeah. He has to reload. Yeah. Get just in time. Boom. So crawls over to one. This is where he sees the the thing in his neck. Is that jewelry? Cuts it out. It, it's really like they, they have him really cutting <laughs> around the cartilage. Yeah. And he's like, what the hell? Pretty, pretty nasty. He sees it. You know, it looks like a whistle. Um, figures out this is how they communicate with. So this is he sees stuff on the ground, right? He sees some of the some of the supplies. He surveys the layout he lies down and he blows the whistle and one of them runs out shoots him three down so guys still that was alive. A, that he, was like a kid right that was yeah this is what he, kid, right? he yeah. right and he has some you know compassion he looks at him he puts him out of his misery so and he look, crawls up he looks over the burial ground so sheriff's telling mrs o'dwyer she needs to eat for sustenance she's like uh they wouldn't want us to grow lean so you know not eating too much so this is the nice little part with Mr. Chicory. Um, Chicory's talking about the flea circus, right? Mrs. O'Dwyer, so she saw it too. Chicory's wife saw it, said it was all a trick, said they were all dead. And he's like, I thought it was real. I believe those fleas are alive and talented. Most flea circuses employ tricks, but the Sandersons use real living fleas. <gasps> I knew it was all there. I just felt it. Thank you. Thank you for verifying that. It's kind of a mess metaphor, right? Like how, how positive he was. And so I, I, I like the little thing him, between. Right? Yeah, I like the little thing between Mrs. O- O'Dwyer and Sheriff. They're kind of like, you know, let's. Let's make them happy, you know. I, I think she's like, yep, yeah, no, that I know that one for a fact. That was, that was a real real, one. Yeah. Most Sandersons, of them used ones, Sandersons right. used right. Sandersons used real, real fleas, live fleas. You hear a scream. They they came out. They figured out they were poisoned, so they drag in the dead one. This is when they open up. They get the sheriff. So he charges him. They pin him down. They tie his legs. This is Chick- yeah. so Chickory's yelling for him to wake up, wake up. Guy slices they... him. The thing. Wake up. thing is so sharp, Slice, right? Slices him and puts the flask in. Puts him. in the hot flask. In oh. him, right. Uh, ouch. Which is the end of the end. 
So yeah. Chicory tells him he'll make sure I'll make, I'll make sure you're avenged, right? I'll he wants sure he's trying to tell him he's I'll you know he sure. thinks that's what he sure. wants to hear, sure but Sheriff's not dead, not I'll gonna die like yet. Cool. So the guy shoots him in the arm. He tries to shoot him in the junk, but he didn't know how to reload. So you hear shooting outside. Arthur's killing, killing some. Sheriff yells, Arthur, there's. Arthur! There's one in here with a. That's when the guy shoots him in the torso, Mike. In the torso. This is why he's, he's, he's coughing up blood because of it. Oh, I guess. So. What a Sheriff grabs, So Sheriff grabs the, the bone tomahawk and cuts off the guy's. Just half savagely. His foot. Oh, yeah, yeah that awesome. gets the foot. First gets a foot, Arthur comes in, shoots him, uh, leans, leans up, and this is with the sheriff, three hacks. Beheads him. Head so. right off. Arthur crawls in, and sheriff can't breathe. This is, you know, he, he just hearing it. He's so great in this part, right? Kurt Russell. So he's, he's like, how many How many you get? You got three? Just, there are three more. Bruder, gone. And are you going to make it, sheriff? Nope. He's like, are you That's positive? That's a simple answer. I am. Okay. He says, I am. And then he tells Chicory, you need to ask him to come home and have a talk with him. I guess he's going to ask Arthur to be the sheriff. I don't know. I'm staying here. I intend to finish off the mails since they know about Bright Hope. I want you to escort the O'Dwyers home and make sure they get there safe. Yes. How's your life? Call Chicory, sheriff. Anything I can do for you? Put that Peter in my hands. Go out the way you came in. Don't dawdle. Oh right! I my wonder, yeah, that, talk with him. Yeah. That's that's what I, I that's what I thought. Said, and then I love the you know the great line. Say goodbye to my wife. I'll say hello to yours. Say goodbye to my wife. I'll, I'll say, say hello, hello to yours. So, pretty great. Chicory says, Chicory does his job. Says yes, sir. So he doesn't want to leave, leave though. He gives him the repeater. Yep. Gives and him the he repeater. He's like, he's... "I'll make sure they're gone." Right? They leave. They see the you see the blinded pregnant. You, they have oh, poke the eyes spikes out. in the eyes, and it's brutal. No arms, no legs. So much for trog troglodytes, women's rights, I guess. Right? He's so, Arthur blows the whistle. Walk through the buried ground, and none of them come out. So, Arthur tries to kiss his wife. She doesn't, you know, she's not down with it until you wash your mouth. So, this is when you hear. You hear the gunshots. Chicory smiles. Those gunshots? They were. What did what did what did it throw on the ground? What did Chicory throw? He just throw threw it was a rock. It was a rock. Was it a rock? Was it a skull? I didn't know. I don't know if it was. It was a rock. I, I thought he was trying again. to mark I, the path. Like just. It, it had to be some symbolism. I'm not even sure. I don't even. So, but. It was it was a good ending, right? Yeah, three, yeah, three shots. Chikri's so you like, assume he, he got job. them all. Yep. So and great. I thought he was, you know, putting a rock down to mark it, like just in case you get out of there, sheriff. But yeah, probably so, not. He didn't. That was it. So great What's movie. What's an ending? Like, you know, Kurt. Say it. Oh, he called me today and talked about Kurt Douglas, and I said, "Yes, please say that word for word tonight." <laughs> Please. So this like, this what, makes what? a great double feature with with uh, Christmas Chronicles, like I said, Kurt yes. Russell, <laughs> back to back. So great flick. I'm glad we did it. Great watch. Movie. Bone Tomahawk was glad to hear John Johnny Morris uh, watched it, loved it the other day. <laughs> watch it. He did. Yep. Do you love it? He did. That's a great movie. And, and, and what was Greg was telling us? Uh, you would never watch it. Um, what's that? He said he would never watch it. I said, oh, Greg said he would never watch it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope he listens to this still, but if he doesn't listen to this one, uh, you know, this is, this is about as uncomfortable and raw a movie you can get. Yeah. Uh, 
and it's right after Thanksgiving, but which means it's time for the holiday season. So I thought let's Dave actually asked if we could do something completely different, something enjoyable, something that we could laugh at next time. So that's dragged why dragged across concrete. That's why next time we're doing dragged across concrete. Next time we are doing from 2003, I would call I the we modern this, holiday I classic. What? I can't believe it's this old. Right? We'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. Yeah. So yep. the modern holiday classic, people don't know yet, Elf. It's almost 20 years old. Isn't that insane? It's crazy. It is. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh. So look forward so, to it. Yes, I look forward to it as well. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Christopher, are there any parting words? There are not. There are not. I'm looking forward Good. to it. You gentlemen have a, a nice holiday weekend. Thank you. Waiting for the Patriots to play well. again on Thursday. I want to watch Julian Edelman right now on a football life, so I'm going to go. Very good. Uh, any parting words for you, David? No, go fuck yourself. We talk about great movies while drinking. We talk about great movies while drinking. Yeah, we talk about great movies while drinking. We feel fine. I can't. I can't with this movie, guys. It's fucking horrendous. It's horrendous. That's a, if you just... I'm really watching him. He's putting that whistle from the guy's throat in his mouth, and he's going to blow on it or something. Okay, all right. Let's, let's talk about this movie. Fans not experts.